What if Superman was evil and about five feet tall? In other words, the average 12 year old, but with powers. A young couple prepares to get busy as the camera pans across an infertility book. Suddenly, the couple hears rumbling before something crashes. We cut to a short montage of a baby, Brandon, growing up before fast forwarding to the present day. Tori, Brandon's mother, calls out for him, but he's hiding. Then she whistles and he whistles back. Basically, their version of Marco Polo. Ah, that brings me back. She ends up finding him in the b barn, to which his father, Kyle, is concerned about. Later at school, Brandon flexes his big brain while sharing his extensive knowledge of wasps. He makes mention of a specific type that forces other species to raise its young, foreshadowing. Some kids in the class clown on Brandon, but his classmate, Caitlin, reassures him with kind eyes. Smart guys rule the world. She ain't wrong. At night, something in the barn begins to awaken. It emits a glowing red light and speaks out in a different language. The strange object causes Brandon to do his best impression of He awakens with glowing red eyes and gracefully exits his room. Tori heads out to investigate and She makes her way to the barn and finds an entranced Brandon tugging at the locked trap door. Tori approaches and Brandon snaps back to reality. The pair return home and baby Brandon gets tucked into bed, though the chants continue. Kyle inquires as to what happened and Tori twists the truth. Oh, he was just sleepwalking downstairs. The next day, Brandon and his dad have a chat. You know, son, when you were an annoying little baby, I used to give you candy to shut you up. Did it work? Yeah, you turned out all right. I wish you wouldn't donate to Twitch streamers, but what can you do? Kyle heads out to the store and tasks Brandon with mowing the lawn. While trying to get the engine started, Kyle nearly launches the mower into orbit. Ring, ring, Jeff Bezos would like to know your location. Kyle inspects the mower and stares into the spinning blades. The chants from last night take his mind hostage as he inches his hand closer and closer. I'm built different. Brandon celebrates a discovery at a diner. Just kidding, it's his birthday. We meet some other family members, Aunt Marilee and Uncle Noah. As birthday boy Brandon enjoys some bus and ice cream, Noah presents him with a present. What? This kid's like 12, what are you doing? Fortunately, Daddy Kyle has the right idea. He takes the gun away and scolds Noah. Brandon gets very angry and demands the gun back. Give it to me! Taken aback by Brandon's rebellious behavior, Kyle revokes his Robux allowance and cuts the party short. Onlookers watch on with concern as the family heads out. Back at home, Kyle reflects on Brandon's odd behavior lately, but Tori reassures him, we were just as bad at that age. Sometime later, the family prepares for a camping trip while Brandon eats some cereal. Wait, what the hell is that sound? <laughs> Meanwhile, Tori snoops around Brandon's room and Kyle joins in. They find some interesting, or rather, inch-growing images. Wait, I can't fap to this. As the parents progress through the pictures, they find increasingly shocking images, including human organs. I think it's time for the talk. We cut to Brandon and his dad in the woods. Son, no one ever told me it was okay to touch or play with it. Brandon doesn't quite understand what's going on, so his dad clarifies. I just want you to know that if you have urges about girls in your class, it's okay to act upon them sometimes. Like, now? What? No, dude. Chill. Later at night, Tori is awakened by something running around in the woods. Then, we cut to Caitlin, Brandon's classmate. She's rudely awakened by her laptop playing romantic music. Weird choice of alarm, but okay. She shuts it off, but as soon as she turns around, it begins playing again. She faces the laptop to find it once again opened. This is one pervy ghost, or is it? So someone sus was at the window. Now you tripping, ain't no one here. I swear, it was Brandon Breyer. Back to Brandon. <gasps> Where did you go? Well, me and dad had the talk and I decided to in the woods. The next day, Tori is picking up Brandon when she spots him working on his super villain logo. At night, Kyle is storing Brandon's gun when he hears the chickens wallin' out. Ah, the damn wolf again. He checks it out, but instead of a wolf, finds something much, much worse. A 12 year old. Brandon just stands there ominously while the chickens freak out. Buddy, are you okay? I think so. Okay. We cut to later in the night. Kyle is awakened by the harrowing sounds of screeching chickens and goes to check it out. Oh god. This calls for an emergency meeting. He wakes up Tori and shows her the carnage. Pretty sure this was Brandon. He's been acting really weird lately. Tori immediately stands in defense of Brandon. No, it was the wolf, okay? Okay. Sometime later, and at school, Brandon and his class are playing a game of trust fall. When his turn comes up, Caitlin refuses to play along. He falls, and the coach has her help him up, to which he responds, No, he's a pervert. Everyone laughs at Brandon, and then the coach threatens to fail her if she doesn't comply. She extends a helping hand, then, Brandon shows her just how strong his grip has been getting. We cut to Brandon in the principal's office. Erica, Caitlin's mom, demands he be arrested for what he did. Though, the sheriff explains that won't be happening. Instead, Brandon will be suspended for two days and will have to undergo sessions with the school's counselor, which just so happens to be his aunt Marilee. Erica also shares that Caitlin saw Brandon in her room, though no one believes her. Later at home, Tori reveals to Kyle that when Brandon was sleepwalking the other night, he was actually in the barn. 
Fear immediately overcomes Kyle. Did he find it? No, but he was tugging at the door. It's like he was drawn to it. Kyle reminds Tori that while he may look like us, Brandon is built different. He's never been cut or bruised, and now he's hurting people. Meanwhile, the voices have invaded Brandon's mind again. The three-word chant repeats over and over as he decodes the first word. Take. Hmm. I wonder what the full message could be. The suspense is killing me. Tori does some research on the night of the crash. But why, though? You were there. You know exactly what happened. Anyway, Brandon once again finds himself at the barn's trap door, but this time, he tears off the lock. Tori spots the light show from the window and finds Brandon hovering while repeating the alien mantra. Take. The. <laughs> Brandon falls and gets cut on the spaceship. Tori tends to him, then he asks, what am I? Tori reveals the horrifying truth. You're adopted. Your real dad? Omni-Man. Okay, but yeah, you're an alien and this is a spaceship. An infuriated Brandon runs upstairs and starts smashing everything. Tori reveals to a shook Kyle that Brandon uncovered the truth. Brandon storms outside and decodes the final, elusive word. Take. The. World? Wow, I didn't expect that. Uh... Brandon runs off to Caitlin's place and brings her a flower. My mom told me not to talk to you. I'm gonna take care of that. We cut to the diner where Erica works. As she closes for the night, she notices countless symbols suddenly appear on the windows. Then, the lights start flickering and she stares directly at them. Bad idea. <gasps> Brandon terrorizes Erica, then she counters. <laughs> Ineffective. She seeks shelter in the freezer, but Brandon's got a heat vision to keep her warm. As he tears away the door, we see that he's rocking some new drip. <laughs> the next day, Brandon tells his parents he's feeling much better and that everything's fine. Meanwhile, the sheriff and his crew wreck the crime scene at the diner. He makes note of the peculiar symbols left on the window. Brandon undergoes his first session with Merrily, but things quickly take a troubling turn when Brandon admits he feels no remorse for what he did to Caitlin. Sometimes, bad things happen for a good reason. Yikes, yeah, I'm gonna have to tell the sheriff about this. Later at night, the voices call out to Brandon. Then, we cut to Merrily's house. Her motion detectors alert her of an unknown presence. Brandon, what are you doing here? He's here to drop off a warning. Snitches get stitches. Don't you go telling the sheriff about me. Merrily tells him that this is extremely inappropriate. Fine. I'll just walk back home. Okay, Brandon, stay safe. You too. <laughs> what a cheeky bastard you are, Brandon. Meanwhile, Merrily's man, Noah, is cracking a cold one with the boys. The men discuss Erica's disappearance and joke that Brandon might be behind it. Didn't he crush her daughter's hand? Anyway, Noah heads out early. Back at Merrily's house, Brandon stalks his prey when suddenly he hears Noah's car pull in. He hides and narrowly avoids detection before. Oh, shit. What the? Brandon? Noah drags him back to his car, but Brandon warns him not to tell his parents. You're lucky if that's all I do. <laughs> Noah rushes into the car as Brandon makes chase. <laughs> Great, the car stopped. Noah desperately tries to get it running again while Brandon stares him down. And he's gone. Brandon lifts the truck into the air, then drops it. As Noah fades into the darkness, Brandon watches. He reaches out for some of his blood so he can leave his calling card at the scene. A shirtless Brandon returns home to a pair of very concerned parents. He offers up a sob story. I was playing soccer with the kids after school and they bullied me and my shirt ripped and then I walked home. Tori reaches for Brandon's dirty shirt, but he clutches it, raising Kyle's suspicion in the process. Later, Kyle has a nightmare about the night Tori found Brandon in the woods. Him and Tori are awakened by a call from Merrily. We cut to the hospital where they learn Noah's fate. Then Merrily asks, did Noah make it home safe? He left you? The next morning, they share the news with Brandon. Your uncle Noah died. Okay. Kyle chimes in. We know you were there last night. Though, Brandon feigns ignorance about what happened. This is bullshit. He's lying to our faces. Tori and Sissy calms down, but tensions reach a fever pitch. <laughs> Brandon storms off to take a shower, and Kyle searches for his solid shirt. Oh my god, it's blood. He takes the evidence to Tori, but she continues to live in denial. You're blaming our son because you feel guilty about letting Noah drive home drunk. Meanwhile, the sheriff looks over the case and spots a familiar symbol. We cut back to Kyle, who's reminiscing about the days when his son wasn't a superpowered psychopath. Later in bed, he reassures Tori that all Brandon needs is some love. I'm gonna take him out on a little trip, just me and him. Remind him that I'm still his dad and I care about him. The next day, Tori bids farewell to the both of them. After they leave, the sheriff arrives and questions Tori over the strange symbol he uncovered. Kinda looks like two bees, doesn't it? Brandon Briar, perhaps? Tori's mood turns sour and she sends him on his way. Though, she can't deny reality any longer. She runs up to Brandon's room and finds his notebook, revealing the symbol along with several horrifying sketches. Meanwhile, Kyle prepares to do what needs to be done as Brandon inspects some deer tracks. Ah, shit. Brandon takes to the skies and dons his iconic fit. Kyle pleads for his life, but Brandon's not feeling particularly merciful. Back to Tori, she calls Kyle, and he picks up. 
Oh my god, I'm so sorry. You were right, Brandon. Kill them all. Mom. Oh no. It's Brandon, and he's hovering just above the house. He proceeds to make an absolute mess of the place, and an utterly terrified Tori calls the cops. The sheriff heads back and calls for backup. They arrive on the scene, and he insists that she's safe now. <laughs> Next up, the lady officer. Okay, this one's pretty funny. Don't lie. Tori hides under the bed before hopping out the window. She makes her way into the barn, then touches the spaceship. It begins to flash red, revealing what remains of Erica in the background. You know how in science class you do that thing with the frog? Yeah, just, just imagine that. Tori arms herself with a piece of the spaceship, then whistles for Brandon. He whistles back, and she finds him. They embrace, and Tori lets him know that she still believes there's good in him. I want to do good. Mmm, <laughs> that's a little too late, my guy. <gasps> oh, jeez. Brandon intercepts a strike, then takes his mom to see the stars. With a cold, calculating expression, he lets her go. Oh, hey, an airplane. And there it goes. The film ends with a montage of various sightings of the so-called Brightburn. We also learn of other potential supervillains. Sounds like a sequel to me.